So hi guys, I'm so excited to have our next guest. She's amazing. She's incredible. She is um, just somebody that I look to for financial and wealth advice. And I hope that one day I'll be able to afford her so that she can manage my finances. <laughs> incredible. Um, welcome the very um, knowledgeable, experienced, and adorable and amazing Winnie Sun. How are you doing? Oh, you are so sweet. I feel like a double-headed unicorn right now. Because <laughs> you are, because you're a managing <laughs> partner, you know, of Sun Wealth, um, and um, you uh, give so much great financial advice across all different, you know, media channels. I think you've been on CNBC and uh, Forbes and uh, a bunch of other can you remind me? Because, like, I have Alzheimer's. Um, You're supposed what? to know this stuff. No, Damn kidding. it. <laughs> uh. well, I, well, to answer your question, it, you know, I don't blame you because the list is, a, is sort of obscenely too long. Yes. Days, but I am on the CNBC Digital Council, the regular money person on Good Day LA. I do a ribbon for, I'm a contributor for Forbes now for almost seven plus years. Wow. And I do have a brand new show coming out on what? the CW and NASDAQ. In 2020. That's <laughs> awesome. Grabbing you first. Yeah. All right. What's it all about? I'm so excited. What's the show? show is called Level Up with Winnie. Whoa. So it's all about how you know, I'm going to teach you and talk to you and introduce you people and myself. We're going to teach you how to level up so that you can have the best in life. I love it. It's like. You love it? I love it. Yeah. It's like a Sierra song and it's like Susie Orman, but with a uh, amazing Asian woman. I love it. Okay. Um, but a lot nicer too. <laughs> Susie Orman is like, okay, so okay, because I feel like this. I feel like Susie Orman is like an Asian mom almost. Like she cares, Asian mom? I don't but, get that, but okay. <laughs> but okay, okay. Cause she cares, cause she's a lesbian, right? So she's gonna give it to you straight. So I feel like it's her way of caring. So so you think she's kind of mean? Okay. I mean, I can see that too. That makes sense. Well, you know what? Um. I don't know if she's mean, but she seems pretty rough, you know? Yes, and she's I, very direct. Guess, yeah. I can see those whole like Asian mom correlation because I have a pretty tough Asian mom and yeah, I can see some like that those moments where like you need to save money. Where's all your? I can see. I can see there be a correlation there. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> but you're much nicer, and it's like I love it because like you you're more like approachable. Aww. I feel because I think when people think financial advisor, they're like this like really uh, stuffy old white guy and very judgmental. And they're like scared. Uh, yeah. And not to say like you're not knowledgeable, but I just feel you're approachable. Does that make sense? Like I don't want to make it seem like it's a bad thing, but I just feel like you're relatable. At least to well, me. I mean, I, I don't really think approachable or relatable is a bad thing. I mean, I feel like yeah, that's, that's I feel like I can embrace that uh, significantly. But you know, I, I I I love what you're saying that though, because like you know, being a financial advisor for so long, I gotta admit, sometimes I get in a room a bunch of financial advisors, I get the heebie-jeebies too. But <laughs> the good news, there's people like us out there that will embrace and love you. So you just gotta find yeah. us out. I mean, we're a little hard to find, but we exist. Yeah, I love it. That's yeah. awesome. I'm so, so glad. Now I can like manage my finances. I feel like there's a lot of guilt and shame involved in finances. I think people right. are starting to talk about more, or well, at least maybe in in my coaching world circle because there's a lot of like shame around feeling you should be better with money but you're not Aww. and a lot of guilt so just the more woohoo space anyways but I feel like you have the structure because you actually you right like because you, you graduate from UCLA you know you have you know hit like most of the important media spots that mattered and like you you know obviously have a great financial background so it's an excellent blend um, for me. That's, you know, you're just Lee, you're just basically saying that I'm really old, but I'm good. With that. Uh, no, <laughs> no, you look like you're like. Uh, <laughs> shit. Well, now, now what? Now what do I say? Um, if you see her picture, okay, I'm gonna find the best, and it's gonna, not gonna be even hard. I'm gonna find the most gorgeous picture on your on the video, so like people can't even uh, be mad. Okay. I'm going to find the most, <laughs> we saw your profile picture anyway. It's beautiful. Well, um, okay. Yeah. Well, one yeah. of the advantages of being <laughs> Asian, right? Asian. Yeah. Asian don't raisin <laughs> and don't crack in any of the things that a uh, regular skin does, I guess. Um, but seriously, you, you glow, you look beautiful. Uh, and so, okay, let's, um, I just love shooting, shooting the, the stuff with you. Um, we're, we didn't even start the interview. And we're just having so much fun. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> all right. So first official question. What is like the funniest finance joke, you know, or like the funniest thing that's happened to you at work? 
Oh my gosh, so many funny things happen to me all the time. Because those of you who know, I'm, you know, I'm a financial advisor. I always say I'm a financial advisor by trade, and I also play one on TV. So, mm -hmm. so many funny things happen to me constantly. But um, I will tell you something that I think a lot of you will think is hilarious. So, the first time I was on CNBC, Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was all nervous, but I was excited. I remember me on CNBC. I feel like, <laughs> wow, they reached out. They wanted to be on the show. I was like mm -hmm. making the big leagues. And then mm -hmm. after I got off the show, I was like, oh, I think I did okay. And then my publicist calls me and she's like, so when he, CNBC called, I was like, mm -hmm. I was, and I was like, okay. And she's like, well, well, I'm like, and she was like, she couldn't come up with words. So I'm like, okay, this is either really good or really bad. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, well, well, well. I'm like, okay, Jess, you're not really the type that actually ever is a, at a loss of words. So just yeah. get at it. <laughs> yeah, She's yeah. like, well, she like, well, the good news is they said you looked the part. And I was like, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. the suit yeah. works. Uh, yeah. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said the bad news is they, they think there's something wrong with your tongue. I'm like, what's what? wrong with my tongue? <laughs> So I know, right? I was like, what? Okay. So then, um, so basically, um, without them really saying it, because then I went to speech therapy, you know, like I went to like media coaching, all this stuff, only to figure out what was wrong from, from myself by finally mm. doing live streaming. And mm. what it was is, is I was speaking Chinese because I spoke Chinese before I spoke English, like many of right. us, right? Yeah, me so too. I have, yeah full-blown Chinese, but they thought it was something wrong with my tongue and it wasn't it's just because when you speak Chinese as you know yeah um Chinese is very abrupt right okay bye. yes yes like, yeah exactly like like all these like terms like yeah everything's really short right yeah but exactly e but English gotta take your time and you gotta right, enunciate yes. yeah. <laughs> such an inefficient right? language <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Anyway, I hope you can like that story because yes. I think it was Yeah, hilarious. I love that. That's hilarious. So what did you say? Chinglish? Ching Chinese. I speak Chinese. Chinese. Oh, Cantonese, right? Oh, okay. Ching okay. I speak Chinglish. 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 Yeah. Now I'm that's embracing, hilarious. I've embraced my Chinglish and I mm -hmm. think we should all embrace our Chinglish, like whatever variation of Chinglish you have. Yeah. But um but now it's 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 cool. It's so funny now because I go on different shows now, and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, you're a natural!" I do TV all the time, almost like every day, right? I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, she's a natural, isn't that? And I'm like laughing. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. seven years in the making, natural. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's obvious. You're super entertaining to listen to, and you have so much good Aww. wisdom on your show. So and live stream, so I love it. Um. Yeah. So okay. So how did you become a financial advisor? Uh, well, you know, it's a long story. Um, how much time do you have? Um, basically, All day. All day. okay. So, yeah. you know, so, so typical Asian kid, I'm guessing you're going to be in this situation. Those of you listening, yeah. tell me, raise your hand, raise your hand. Yeah. So I know that you're here yeah. and you're doing the same thing. But um, I was like total geekaholic in school, right? Like typical, mm -hmm. you know, my mom's like, there is nothing but an A plus, anything else yeah, is an exactly. A plus and you're a loser. <laughs> So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I had great GPA. I was all set to go to a really nice school up, up in Northern mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. And then about three months before I started college, my parents pulled me aside. And, um, you know, these are like, like just hardcore. My mom's hardcore, right? Like my mom could mm -hmm. go to war right now. Like defeat. Yeah. <laughs> so tough. She comes up to me and she goes like, um, Winnie, or she didn't say Winnie. She said like something like, you know, um, did you? I need to talk to you. And so I'm like, okay. And I talk. So I sit down. She's like, and I'm like, what's wrong? And then my mom's like, never emotional, right? And I see right, right. What, I, what I call a shiny eyeball. So I'm looking at her <laughs> eyes and I see shiny That's right. eyeball. That's so funny. Like, right? <laughs> what, 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 what is this? And she's like, she's like, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, but remember that project that dad and I saved a lot of, like kept saving for, invested in that real estate project in Claremont. I was like, yeah. She's like, well, that was for your college. I was like, okay. And my college. Okay. Well, the partner went bankrupt. So where do you have to go bankrupt? So three months before I go to college, we have no money. We have no money. That's so cool. be yeah, so because of that, like I just had to hustle really, really hard. You know, mm -hmm. throughout college, I was like working bajillion jobs, mm -hmm. and then at some point, I said, you know, I probably should learn something about financial planning mm -hmm. because my immigrant parents need help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't want to go <laughs> yeah. through bankruptcy right. again. Yeah, really yeah wow. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how I became a financial advisor. I said I was actually, I was working on television. Um, mm-hmm. I was doing very, very well. And I was taking the financial planning course or um, certificate program at night at UCLA. Mm-hmm. And the professor who ended up being the dean or not sorry, the, the regional director at Smith Barney actually mm-hmm. told me to interview at Smith Barney, which was at the time one of the largest financial firms. You know, we earn money the old fashioned way. And mm-hmm. um, so I got I got uh, I got an offer to work at Smith Barney, I sold my business, put on my first suit and went to work. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. And how was that experience? Interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting because um, uh like I'll tell you this because obviously mm. I, you know we're having this Asian discussions. I feel like you're not my people, yeah. and everyone yeah. else is my people, <laughs> and you'll relate to this. Oh, yeah. so I was working there. And I was all excited, you know, like I'm working mm. in this fancy office, mm. fancy desk. Yeah. I have a suit on. I got my mm. clean shoes on. Life is good. Mm-hmm. And then this advisor comes in. You know, this financial advisor comes in. He's like a really nice guy. I thought he was a really nice guy. He kind of looked like. Uh, one of the characters from The Simpsons, you know the guy. Uh, Which one? <laughs> you know the guy who wears glasses, uh, like the the, the evil planning guy, like he no, was the, kept... the studious uh, one, the the kind of like mill mill no. something. Is his name Fred? Uh, you yeah, know, it's been so long. Sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna Google this because we we, okay. we need to know because yeah, those of you are listening know. right now are like, sure. who is she talking it's about? <laughs> Simpsons characters. I want to say his name is Ned. Hold on, let me see. Uh, Ned Flanders. Ned Flanders. That's yes. Oh okay. God, that's hilarious. So anyway, this advice <laughs> looks like Ned Flanders. So now you have now you have visual. the sexy Flanders or regular Flanders. Regular, like oh, okay. sweater okay. Flanders. Okay, right now you have a visual, right? Mm-hmm. We're good. So he walks in my office and goes, Winnie, like, welcome to the office. Congratulations. I'm like, cool, thank you. Wow, everyone's so you're so nice. You're like, welcome you to the office. I'm feeling very like legit right now. And he goes, he goes like, yeah, so yeah, welcome to the office. So the manager got a mm-hmm. great uh, bonus hiring you because you're a double minority. I was mm-hmm. like, cool, thank you, right? I'm like 24. Yeah. I was like, thank you so much. I'm like, ha ha ha, like, thank you so much and everything. <laughs> and then he walks out and then I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> <double minority. laughs> but it's true though, it's true. Yeah, we're double minorities. I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so Asian and female. And, then the, yeah, and yeah. after a while, I'm like, Oh crap! That's what he meant. So yeah. they didn't really hire me because I'm awesome. They didn't uh, really hire me because of my talent. They hired me because he wanted to get a bonus, and I felt so ashamed at that moment. And um, I was thinking to myself, how am I going to walk myself back to my car? Because right now I'm just like feeling like just the smallest person. But then yeah. at that moment, I'm like, let's screw that. I'm gonna, I'll produce them all. <laughs> yes. And yes. I, I felt you. I felt. So that. Yeah. I was like, okay. At that point, you know, that's when, like, I got my groove. I was doing my inner dance in my head. Yes. And I was like, let's get this business rolling. I got to yeah. make phone calls. I'm going to get working. I'm going to yeah. find those big clients. Mm-hmm. Bada bing, bada boom. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. I love that story. That's amazing. And, like, how did you start your own own firm? So, okay, so I was at Smith Barney for over a decade. Um, Morgan mm-hmm. Stanley bought them out. I didn't feel like it was the right home for me anymore. So it was mm-hmm. time to look at a different home. And um, pretty much every firm on the street wanted us uh, for a lot of different mm-hmm. reasons, probably also yeah. because I was female and young. So, yes. and I was doing just a, a, I was just doing a crazy amount of business. So also, and did you, did you also overproduce everyone? Like what was there? I wasn't sure what of her time course, was, but my I'm like, friend. Yeah, of course, my friend. Love it. Amazing. Of course. Okay. How so fast did my... you get promoted? Like, well, like, so. Yeah. Well, the first week of business, a, a, some, another person came to meet me with, um, and it was like someone, really nice guy. And he had just started the business and he wasn't in, he wasn't an advisor, but he like was a wholesaler. He represented a mutual fund company and we became friends. And he's like, you know, Winnie, I don't know. There's something about you. I'm telling mm-hmm. you, you're going to be in the corner office really soon. Hello. And, and he was right. I it wasn't too much longer. I ended up in a beautiful corner office. And so, you know, I made VP, like all these titles and then, um, and then, yeah, so then everybody wanted us. We were given some crazy um, uh, sign-on bonuses, join them. And mm-hmm. then eventually, one of my mentors in the business, someone I really trust and really, really, um, really looked up to. And for mm-hmm. me, it was never about the money. It was really about, like, you know, I know it sounds crazy because I'm a financial advisor, but for me, mm-hmm. it was all about the competition and about mm-hmm. the growth, about 
um, about being able to be really good, a really good advisor for like a client to come in with shiny eyeball and say mm-hmm. like, I changed your life. <laughs> that was my, that was what I want. I wanted to make a difference in as mm-hmm. many clients' yeah. lives as I could. So yeah. then, um, you know, I had my, I was pregnant with my first child at Smith Barney. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the greatest experience. And mm-hmm. I felt like I needed to have it all. So, mm-hmm. um, I wanted to be in an environment where I could be a mom and mm-hmm. I could be a financial advisor and both mm-hmm. would be simply, both would be amazing together. Like I wouldn't have mm-hmm. to sacrifice one for the other. And yes. so that meant really creating my own firm. So I have this amazing business partner, Brandon. Brandon Chang has been my business partner for 20 years. One of the wow. nicest, my, like my best friend, my little brother. Yeah. Love and it. Um, so he and I, we jumped ship and mm-hmm. um, we started our own firm. And the rest is history. And now I'm sitting here talking to you. So life is good. <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay. There's so many things that happen. Oh my God. How did you meet yeah. your significant other? And like, what has being a mom been like? Are you talking about my hubby or are you talking about my business partner? Uh, I guess people? both then. Uh, both. Yes. Okay. I met yeah. my husband and my sisters graduated from Cal Berkeley back in the day. Nice. Go and then, Yeah. Go Bears. And I met my business partner, uh, who is not my husband. Need I? Need, it sounds like I need to clarify. Um, I met him um, at in the cap, uh, in the kitchen at Smith Barney and Pasadena. And we were both going to get mm-hmm. the same car, and then we started talking about cars. And I don't know why I did that because I don't talk about cars, but um, we talked about cars, and then we became friends. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. And he so... was wearing a suit that was way too big for him because he was just a kid. <laughs> That's hilarious. So like, okay, I obviously started this podcast to find a millionaire or yeah. better because mm-hmm. I'm divorced and I don't care anymore. Uh, yeah. So what advice do you have for, yeah, so what, what advice do you have for single women trying to find rich men? Be a rich woman and you'll find a rich man. Ah, I was afraid you're going to say that. Now I have to do work. Well, you know why? Because well. like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Like, it's so that, that is true. Yeah, being rich is awesome. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I okay, not not, 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 being rich is awesome. I mean, being able to have that, that confidence, knowing that you're on an even playing field is yes. awesome. That you is know? very true. Yes. And mm-hmm. not only that is, you don't want to be with a guy that you need to depend on for in any ways. Yeah. You, yeah. You want someone that like brings happiness to your life and balances you. But then you both are winning by being together. Right. You yes, know? True. So mm-hmm. I'm telling you, like, we are all sort of secret millionaires in disguise. We just have to find mm. a superpower. And that's like, a good way to say, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason why everybody listening to your amazing podcast couldn't oh. be a millionaire. In fact, I'm on my pursuit to be a billionaire. No, okay, kidding. I'm I totally love it. You're going to make it. I know. No, I know no, you're no. Gonna, like, if it's anyone's going to be you. Um, no, no, I'm too, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, not unfortunately I think it's a good thing. I'm, I've, I've been told I'm too nice um, and, and too nice to make it, to make it like crazy, like a billionaire. I think I have to be pretty ruthless. I, and I, and I, and I own that because I'm proud of that. I love, mm-hmm. I, I always, in my life, even though I manage money, I always say like, there's so much more than just having money. I think that's why clients like me too, because mm-hmm. I give them, pers- I give them perspective. Yes. That is very true. I love that. Um, so yeah, what has been a mom like, you know, running a financial firm, obviously super busy and you have like uh, children and how, how, how do you, how do you manage everything? Well, I have a saying, um, being a financial advisor makes me a better mom and being a mom makes me a better financial advisor. Uh, that's very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's a win on both sides. I think, um, uh, certainly, you know, my kids are awesome and that they, they completely understand money right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and my, my youngest is six and he probably knows more mm-hmm. about money than, mm-hmm. than many of my, yeah. my, my brand new clients. But, mm-hmm. um, but also, you know, be able to provide for my family is really great because obviously I didn't come from money. My husband mm-hmm. didn't come from money and we're able to give our kids such an amazing life. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, and being and working, I think being a financial advisor is very, very hard to be a mother and to be a financial advisor. I think because the financial industry, even at in two, in twenty twenty right now, for a woman financial advisor, there's no such thing as maternity leave. 
So mm-hmm. I didn't have maternity leave when I was a financial advisor and it still doesn't exist today. But fortunately, mm-hmm. um, I have my own firm and I was pregnant with my second child when I moved and started my second, my own firm. And then mm-hmm. I ended up, you know, now I have three kids and people are like, how do you do that? Mm-hmm. And I was like, because moms mm-hmm. are like Wonder Woman. We have capes going yeah. on our shoulders. Seriously. Yeah. Right. So true. And then, and then, you know, financial advisor, I'm like really, really good at planning. So mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, that's perfect. That's basically what a mom's doing all the time. That's right. And yeah. and because I'm like, and because I work, and I kind of think this is a secret, because I work so much, mm-hmm. I'm always in a good mood, you know? So I don't mm-hmm. have like a lot of, I don't have a lot of like, you know, I don't have a lot of that, that, that inner angst or inner anxiety and stuff like that because I'm mm-hmm. a working person. Mm-hmm. I love that. This is, this is amazing. I'm learning so much from you. Um, I'm going to thank you when I when I have my own uh one day so I love that um so no, what no, else no, I want com- you to be my client one day I'm putting it in the air yeah honestly. that's true yes client yeah. yes for sure um yeah. I need to I need to make it right now so this is a good goal um so yeah it would be an honor absolutely um so uh what what are the most common mistakes that you see people make with their money um they focus on a couple of things number mm-hmm. one they, they focus on what they don't know Number two, they focus so much about what they don't have. They feel like they don't have enough mm-hmm. money to get started. Mm-hmm. And the third thing is they, they focus so much on fees that mm-hmm. they, they lose the bigger picture. And uh-huh. the, the, the insecurity keeps them from doing what's better for them. So oftentimes it means um, starting, like like I first started investing when I was 19 years old. I had like wow. $2,000 to my name. That's it. What did you invest more. in? I'm so curious. So I, I had a, one of my college friends, his dad was an accountant and he was doing our taxes because we had started a company even in college. And he's like, when you go get your patootie over to the bank and open up an IRA. So I opened up an IRA and I went into the bank and the, the advisor there gave me a mutual fund, didn't even explain it to me really and just told me to buy it and I invested in it. it and in, in retrospect, it wasn't a great mutual fund, but it it taught me the importance of saving for my future, mm-hmm. even yes. when I had like no money. And yeah. it made all the difference because I think mm-hmm. so many people wait until people are like, Oh, Winnie, I don't feel like I have enough money to see you yet. I'm like, what do you mean? Like yeah. you have, you have like money in your wallet because if yeah. you, do, you probably have money yeah. to see me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. So like, what does money mean to you? Like philosophically, like what, what does it like represent to you? Money means taking care of people I love. I mean, money means solving problems mm-hmm. for people that need me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the most important things in life, money cannot buy. Mm-hmm. Um, but money can make people who care about lives a little bit easier. Easier. Yes, I absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it, um, mm-hmm. yeah that's it. <laughs> yeah. that's so, um, like, what do you teach your kids about money? Because I'm, I'm, I'm having more, like, friends who are parents now. Like, I yeah. feel like it's, it's like really different. I don't know if it's an Asian thing or an American thing. Or it's, I, I think it's definitely like a white American thing. I feel like it's so difficult for them to talk about money. Like, I remember when my friend's mom came over and my mom mm-hmm. asked her like how much her house was and I could see the visible <laughs> discomfort in her face, right? Because she's white. And it's like, and, and sometimes I wonder like, why is it not okay to ask? You know, because like Chinese people mm-hmm. swap info all the time. They're just like, oh, I got this house for a million dollars. How much did you get it for? Oh, wait, I got ripped off. So it's more like... um yeah, and I talked to another millionaire Chinese dude. He's like, the main difference I noticed between Chinese entrepreneurs and American entrepreneurs is that, like, the Chinese entrepreneurs are very okay speaking about money, but like the American entrepreneurs feel kind of weird about it. So, yeah, I guess bringing back the conversation to like how to teach your kids about money, like, how do you teach your kids about money? Well, I'll give you like, I mean, I talk to my kids about money constantly and mm-hmm. we so many, the last few years, everybody's been asking me because they'll meet my kids or they'll talk yeah. about something. They're like, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to know how to do that. And so actually yeah. L- LinkedIn approached me and we created a oh, course wow. on how to teach your kids about money. What? So you can okay, actually, what's the link? What's the link? I um, it's on, it's on LinkedIn. If you just, mm-hmm. if you Google Winnie LinkedIn learning, it'll mm-hmm. pop right up. But yeah, um, go. yeah, for many of you can actually, I think many of you can actually download it for free and um, depending on what you have on LinkedIn. But anyway, um, but I think that the key thing is, like you said, like as Asian kids, we were taught mm-hmm. 
at a very young age talking about money constantly. Constantly, I mean, yes. Goodness, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but still to a certain point, I think there's, you know, because as in most Asian families, although they talk about money, they, they don't really know to talk about money in a way that will empower children. I think they just like complain about it constantly. <laughs> yeah, right? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and I love the way you use empowered. <laughs> yeah, but I think like, it's so we, true. Yes, right? it's always shame. Kids. Yeah, yes. it's like oh my god, shame so and guilt. We, we don't have any yeah. money, or we have some, and that person. Like, it's, yeah. But then, but then that person has a lot of money, and therefore they're so much cooler than all of us because they have so much yeah. money. But it, it's so yeah. unhealthy. But <laughs> yeah, it with, is. Yeah, with my kids, I talk to them. Well, first of all, this is you know, sound this is gonna make you laugh too but mm-hmm. my kids literally think we're like homeless i tell my kids constantly <laughs> how how we don't have money and we're so poor and we're the brink of bankruptcy oh my god so my, <laughs> my oldest is now 10 years old he's like but yeah. mom but why is our house so big like, like <laughs> right, we we looked it up at school we did google maps and our house is so much bigger than everyone else's house i'm like I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, know, house, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what. Let me let me show you. Oh my God. Let me show you. Um, uh, I, it's probably because the bank owns our house, and we're we're gonna lose it at any point. But really, oh my God, nobody. that's hilarious. And then my my, my eight year old's like, <laughs> Mom, we always go on vacation. I'm like, well, again, like you know, what mommy has, you know, mommy does work with some of these hotels and stuff like that. So you know, like we get to, and like, and everyone's like. Well, are we really? I'm, and then my young oh my like, does that mean we won't have a house next week? Like, you know, we could. So that's why we really knew we about money. Oh my God. This is hilarious. So I teach him about how to use money. Um, <laughs> I mean, and, I'm sorry, and, I need to stop laughing, but you're so hilarious. That's oh, okay. okay. I mean, I'm glad I'm making you laugh because I mean, yeah. it's, it's a big deal because you're a comedian and I'm a financial yeah. manager. I mean, the geeks making the cool kid laugh. You're funnier just, than me, though. You're funnier than me. No, this yeah, is like my, my hate. I've seen your videos. Yeah. Oh, well, but okay. I don't know what to say about that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're funnier than yeah, so, me. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. My kids, um, yeah, so my kids and I use credit cards, they you know, like about, um, you know, travel points. And um, so one thing that we do consistently, we have discussions about money openly. I do show, share with them how much I work. I do once in a while, I'll, I'll show them checks that I'll receive. Um, so they're, they're very exposed to money. And in addition, I even like when we go different places, um, we talk about it everywhere we go, like, you know, how to shop, how to save money and stuff like that. I mean, like how to look for good deals on Walmart, Amazon, and, and how do we like do shopping portals, like the craziest stuff that I do, they have been exposed to. And mm-hmm. um, one thing is, I think we have really healthy discussions about money. We're, we mm-hmm. talk about it. I don't ever say like, nothing is off the table. Nothing is like, mm-hmm. you know how like we're kids, like, Oh no, that's adult stuff. Like, you, you know, yeah, kids, yeah, like children don't, to, yeah, yeah. children don't need, yeah, children need don't need to ask, don't need to know about this stuff. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. in my house, and my husband mm-hmm. are really good about talking to them about everything. So mm-hmm. like, they um, they'll stick in the credit card, they'll have cash, they'll pay mm-hmm. for things. They mm-hmm. will um, even the six year old, and they will um, every time we go to a restaurant, which is really infrequently because mommy mm-hmm. is a financial advisor, so therefore yeah. we still don't eat out much. <laughs> so um, they are in charge of putting the tip down and adding it up mm. and it's very important like that is, like, yeah. I, have, I have this whole ticket system that like this whole family currency system that literally I could tell you about you like love but you gotta go down a little course because it's all mm-hmm. in there and I, I put all I like how nothing back every single thing that of the best that I do with my kids I put it all in that course mm. that's amazing um definitely go i'm gonna download that course right after this i love that so okay, and um, let me know i'm gonna have to find a way to get you guys like free access if for those of you who don't have access let, oh, me, okay. let me figure it out but otherwise okay. yeah I, we, I think i'm good I, I just need to talk to them about giving out some courses for some of those um the segments are free because there's good stuff in there okay awesome yeah. and we're going a little bit over on time are you okay with it because I know I said it, 30, well, but this is great. Your, your viewers are, they're okay. Sorry to put you up with me, but like, yeah, I'm just- No, you're amazing. Because I said 30 minutes, but it's like, it's going so well that I want to just keep continuing it because you're just so oh. amazing. But I, I know you're really busy, so I just want to make sure like- No, I'm good. Like, I have a okay, client awesome. flying in in half an hour and we're good. Okay, okay, awesome. And then like, can you tell us about your clients? Like what kind of clients do you work with and like, what are some of your best success stories? Okay, well, I have clients of all different sizes. You know, I have like the- 
the, the person who comes in with their first thousand dollars all the mm-hmm. way to um, presidents and CEOs of the major mm-hmm. television movie studios here in Los Angeles. I love um, it. I have been worked. I have worked with DreamWorks since DreamWorks Animation since 2005. I can share that a little bit with you. So mm-hmm. I work with them um, all sorts of clients. I work with c- celebrities as well as regular people. Some of the biggest mm-hmm. social media influencers on the planet are my clients. Mm-hmm. I work with mm-hmm. really, really nice people. That's my only rule. I don't care how much money you have. I just care that you're a really nice human. If mm. you're a good human, I will be happy mm-hmm. to spend time with you. Mm. I love that. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, how can we? Um, work with you how can we stalk you like uh what what is your social medias well um i'll tell you a little secret so Mm -hmm. i'm actually considered the most influential female financial professional on social media today oh yeah love it so i'm really easy to find all you gotta do is hit google hit winnie sun and Mm -hmm. um all sorts of fun things will pop up but if you want to find me um like winniesun.com or sungroupwp.com or on all the social media channels, I'm Winnie Sun. Um, so, you know, mm-hmm. should be easy to find. Me. I love I'm it. Pretty, any, any, I'm pretty easy to find. You are, yeah. You're very uh, easy to find. You're like all over the place on LinkedIn. I love Just it. Don't so, go, um, don't go on my Wikipedia profile because my photo what? is really funky looking there. <laughs> oh my god, that's but you look beautiful in all your pictures. But okay, I guess high standards. Um, anyways. <laughs> Uh, so like anything else you want to share with our audience before we let you go that you didn't get a chance to talk about? Well, that that you're just amazingly wonderful. Like I, we Uh we connected on Facebook not too long ago. You've just just been the sweetest person. I wish I could meet you in person. Um, and you're, you're just incredible. I mean, everything you said kindly about you, I, one day we're going to have to flip the table so we can do this together, but um i i so appreciate your time and, and to be honest with you i would want people to know that i would love to meet more people so don't be shy and reach out i literally one thing i'm really proud about is i am a consistently the same person all the time so mm-hmm. what you hear right now is what you get better or worse <laughs> i love it so thank you so much for this wonderful interview i learned so much i was laughing my butt off uh you're incredible <laughs> and uh when you saw guys yeah good exercise i don't have to go to the gym i hate the gym um so thank you so much again (laughs) and uh hope to have you on future episodes to come okay you said it because i want to come back on now just so you know oh yeah oh yeah part two i look forward to seeing your i look forward to hearing your other episodes and i'll talk to you later